All right, welcome to our Let's Speak BO webinar series. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We're really excited for today's session and we're uh, excited that you'll be joining us today. I just wanted to start off with uh, some announcements. Uh, let's see if you can see my screen. Give it a second. All right. Um, yeah, we're, we just added to our business objects user groups. For those of you on the call that aren't familiar with the business objects user groups, they're free educational gatherings that host uh, presentations dedicated to the core business object uh, tool set. So similar to our Speak BO, we have fantastic presentations covering the core BO uh, tools. And we just recently added a new user group to the area of Tucson, Arizona. This will be taking place on September 18th. If you happen to be in that area, all of the details as far as registration, the presentation topics, it also includes a complimentary lunch, and all of that information can be found at our events site, events.infosol.com slash B-O-U-G. And we also have St. Louis coming up September 20th, Miami, October 4th, Denver, October 31st. Uh, also, we'll be heading to California, San Diego, November 1st, Seattle uh, in November as well, and Indianapolis. So yeah, if you're interested or you know somebody within your organization or a colleague that you feel might benefit from attending these, definitely send them this link and uh, share that information as they're, they're really great to attend and we're happy to continue uh, spreading out into these areas. So at this time, I'd like to uh, welcome our presenter today. We do like to keep these sessions uh, casual and interactive, so definitely for those of you on the call, any questions or comments that come up on this topic, we'd love to hear your feedback. So just enter in uh, any of that into our questions panel, and myself and Paul Grill will be addressing it to our presenter today. So with that being said, I would like to welcome Tyler uh, Kiyoka with Imposol, who's going to be presenting SAP uh, Data Services, the hidden gem of data profiling. Welcome, Tyler. Uh, thank you, Brianna, um, and thanks to everybody who uh, joined the call today, uh, especially after the long weekend. Um, hopefully, you can uh, get a bunch of information out of this. And uh, the, uh, before we get started here, um, you know, the, the reason I think it's important to highlight why we call or why why we've used the term hidden gem um, is basically because the more I use data services um, and, and the more I talk to customers about it and talk about their implementations, the more I find or the more I see uh, pieces that they just weren't aware of or just weren't quite sure how to get started with or how to, you know, what is this and what, what is it meant to do? How do I leverage it? Um, and probably the biggest component that I see um, that some customers know about, um, many don't, is the data profiling aspect of data services. And that's what we'll be going through today. Uh, we'll talk about data profiling and then I'll run through a demonstration of how you can set that up if you have data services installed. Um, and one other thing we do like to do, or we would like to do on this uh, call or this webinar today is just to get an understanding of you all out there um, and we have a couple of poll questions, so we'll run through those and then we can get underway. So, uh, Brianna, if you wanted to pop up those poll questions when you're ready. Yes. So, all of you on the call, you should see on your screen, uh, what version of data services are you currently using at your organization? You have a couple options with the versions or that you're using a different ETL tool altogether. We'll give it a couple of seconds here, and then I'll share the results with you, Tyler. All right, All right. so, okay, so about 62% on the call are using uh, version 4.2. 31% are using different ETL tools, and then about 8% on 3.2. Uh, great, it's a strong mix of data services, which is good and uh, interesting that some of you are using a different ETR tool, but hopefully you can either see something that data services does that's 
um, in, of interest to you, or even just to understand more about you know why why you would want to partake or, or start to look at doing data profiling as a practice. Okay, Brianna, go ahead. Next. All right, so we'll just launch the second one. Are you currently using the data profiler for data services? We'll give it a few seconds here to answer. And this is a tool for profiling your data. So you might be using another tool to do that, to profile your data before you set up your ETL scripts. All right, so the majority actually are not using the data profiler for data services, the percent, so they're using another tool uh, right now to perform this task. Uh, great, and was there a last one there? Um, yeah, Brianna? so we'll just go ahead and uh, wake you guys up with the third poll. When acquiring new data for your data warehouse or reporting database, do you perform uh, data profiling as a pre preliminary task, always, occasionally, or never? All right. So it's a 50-50 split occasionally and never. Mm. Okay. For you today, Tyler. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a great mix. Um, <clears throat> very good. I, I love to, uh, I love the power of these poll questions. It, uh, it's good to really get an understanding of you all out there and, uh, you know, how, you, how you're using certain things, um, which is great. So thank you all for uh, participating with that. All right, so let's get into it. Um, so why data profiling? Um, I must admit that it, it took me a little bit in my career to really uh, grasp the power of data profiling. And um, for me, I would say the third point here um, probably is, is how it really struck home for me, um, especially when I started to play more of a senior role um, in, a, in a data warehouse BI space where I was having to manage work, manage developers. Um, but you know, if you're familiar with data profiling, you would understand that it's it's one of the fundamental pillars of achieving data quality. Um, you know, if you look up any sort of data quality uh, material or research uh, courses, you'll see that data profiling is smack bang the start. Um, you know, uh, so so it's very important from that aspect because if you don't, you know, which leads into the second point, if you can't understand your data then how do you know it's clean? How do you know it's not clean? How do you know it's working? How do you know it's not working? And why is clean important? Because clean, you know, underpins, uh, you know, in, in essentially accuracy, um, completeness, stuff like that, you know. So if your data is not clean, you can't make any sense of it, you, uh, you know, so you essentially you're Reporting could be very sick or, or not meeting the mark, which we definitely do not want that to happen, right? We want to make sure that our reporting is utilized, it makes sense, um, it's accurate, it's consistent, it's reliable. The third point here, um, again, what I was talking about before, that this was a huge thing for me. I, I strongly feel that, it, that data profiling, especially when you're developing new you know, like, like the poll question before, if you're looking to acquire new data into a, a data warehouse or you're just starting out a data warehouse project or you're doing maybe something a little bit more niche like data integration between systems, um, you really should do, you really should, you know, understand the data and do data profiling because what may happen is a situation like this. Um, and essentially nobody's fault, right? You know, you may be talking to a customer um, and they tell you, you know, uh, Tyler, or like they've said to me, Tyler, I need this piece of data. It's very important. This is how it works. This is the, this is why we need it. This is the type of reporting we're going to do from it. You need to hurry up and get it done. This is very important. The CFO is asking for it. So in my, uh, back in the day when I was a very, uh, ambitious developer, I'd be like, no problem. Let's get into it. Well, where is it? And start 
building out an ETL flow and start building out structure changes and you name it, um, getting into unit testing and thinking I was doing a great job, get the data over to the customer and they turn around and tell me this is absolutely wrong. Um, you know, well, what have you given me here? And, you know, when I go to go to look back and say, well, where did the pieces fall apart here? You know, I, the data itself, you know, from not doing data profiling, I haven't modeled it correctly. It's just the wrong data source altogether. Partly my fault for not pushing the customer more to say, well, you know, look, let's, let's take a step back and understand exactly what you're trying to achieve here. Um, so, I, so I feel, taking the time to do data profiling, especially with anything new, can really prevent wasting any wasting any time in development because of whatever I'm sure all of us hate to do it. And that is where you build something out and then you have to go back and redo it again. Uh, you know, it, it, just the amount of time you pull your hair out when this happens. Um, you know, I, I, I could count, I don't have enough fingers to count um, back when I first started, but I've definitely learned my lessons and hopefully this is a good little takeaway for some of you out there who, who may, you know, maybe you don't quite do it. You know, some of you may not have time, which is understandable, but if you can, I'd strongly urge you to, to try and find the time to get this into, um, you know, your practice of, of development or leading projects or executing projects. So again, the fourth point there ties back in, you know, I believe it improves your data modeling, your design, um, because when you start to understand certain aspects of your data, you may uh, architect the table or a schema differently. Um, of course, it helps you from a you know, data type, data space, you know, perspective. You know, if you if you don't need to use max varchar, then you shouldn't. Um, you know, and then that's just good practice, good design practice. And one of the points here is, is it really should be the first step, um, like I said before, when you're taking on any new ETL data integration work. Um, and one of the great parts, um, you know, if you have if you have data services to do your ETL or do your data integration, you know, you're very lucky because the data fi data profiling tool um, is a free component for data services, and it, and I'm still amazed at how powerful it is um, today. Uh, even though it's been around for a little while. All righty, so, you know, rather than bore you with slides, how about we jump into a test system and I'll show you how you can go ahead setting this up. Um, you know, a couple of requirements you do need. Uh, obviously, you need to have data services installed. Uh, you'll need an empty database created. I believe 100 meg should be enough. Um, uh, and, of course, you're going to need some data to profile. So we'll jump over to the test system here. And I'll try to go through this slowly, guys, so you can watch. You know, I know it's being recorded, but I'll take my time here just to walk through the different aspects. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to show you that um, you know, I have Microsoft SQL Server here. So I've created a, a shell database here. You can see that there, BF Prof. There's no tables, etc. So this one's good to go. Okay. And I do have data services installed. You can see me here on the client. Um, and of course, I've got the web tiers ready to go. Websites ready to go once I get started. Okay. So setting up the data profile. So now that we have our database ready, uh, the first step is you need to create it as a data profiling database. And the tool you do to uh, to achieve that with data services lives in the uh, lives in the app section here, and it's the repository manager. So it's this guy here, data services repository manager. You guys should be pretty familiar with this if you use data services daily. Um, and you notice that you'll have to change the repository type. So we've got three here: local, central, and profiler. So we'll go ahead and choose profiler. SQL Server. I'll have to remember my database server name. Classroom VM 2016. All right. 
cool. So there's all my there's all the settings there. Oh, sorry, the specifics of the server, the database name. I'm using SA for my test machine. Um, and if you're just not quite sure if this already, uh, you know, this is a good little trick actually. If if you're not sure whether it's been set up already uh, or, or what version it may be, uh, that's this this little button here, this little function here is pretty handy. So I can tell that hey, I've logged into the server, the database exists, and I definitely know that it's um, it's it's not set up as a profiler database or repository. So I can easily go ahead and just hit create now and it will run off and do its magic. Obviously it's running scripts, setting up objects. So it shouldn't take that long. Excellent. So if everything went well, you'll see this message down the, these two messages down the bottom. Uh, one saying that the profile repository was successfully created. Uh, and the second one saying that, you know, you need to make sure you, you associate this with the job server. Okay. Uh, so obviously very important that it, that if it doesn't belong with the job server, uh, the job server can't do anything with it. Can't, you can't submit, profiling jobs, et cetera, um, but we'll get to that point soon. Okay, so the next thing you'll, uh, and look, if you hit the get version button here, you'll see now that um, it shows that the profiler repository version for 14.2.6, uh, so it's good to go. Alrighty, so now we need to first register the repository on the CMC. Okay, now that's now become an integrated uh, integral part, or sorry, um, now the data services is integrated with the CMC uh, tool itself. Uh, you can see now that it that it lives here on its own little area, data services. You guys should, for those who uh, use the tool now, wouldn't will, will be familiar with this process. So basically, you're just registering to set it up. Uh, so pretty straightforward. We go ahead and click this uh, icon here. We'll give it a name. Switch it over to Microsoft SQL. Okay. So once you have your uh, login credentials, security, et cetera, set, you do need to make sure you set this to yes. Okay. And it needs to know it's a profiler repository because it's now going to associate it to the actual profiling or the profiler server. Okay. And that's just as simple on this machine for doing 8080 with the local host. Uh, and if I go ahead now and test that, it should work. So if everything's set up right, you'll get this successfully connected to repository message. Um, uh, generally, if you don't, either you've got a database name wrong or your security is not quite right. So we can go ahead and save this now. So DS prof. Maybe I'll just give it a little description just to be thorough. Test profile. We'll go ahead and save. Maybe I didn't hit the button properly. No, nope, doesn't seem to like me today. Let's uh, see if we can jig this thing a little bit. I'll when in doubt, try again, eh? 
Alrighty, DS prof test profiler. Server class in twenty sixteen DS Now it looks like my uh, CMC is not playing with me today. Never mind. Uh, as you can see, there's already one set up here, a DS profile baseball stats. So if CMC wasn't having a bad day, it would have let me save it and create it uh, as this entry here would have been pretty much the same, except uh, the uh, it just would have had a different name. So we'll just keep continuing with that. So now that you have it registered with the CMC, um, the next step is to go ahead and get that registered or associated with the job server. Okay. And you'll have to use a different tool for that. Alrighty. So let's jump out of there. Again, it lives in the app area. Uh, and you guys, uh, for those who use data services, you'll, you'll know this one. It's the uh, data services server manager. Okay, this is it here, and we need to jump into the configuration editor. And we'll have to edit the existing. And you'll get to this screen here, and we just want to go ahead and add that one. Again. Oh. And so I could remember that. Oh, sorry, different database. Baseball stats. Go ahead and copy that one. Why? Bang. And now you should see it registered here. Um, or registered in the associated repositories on the left. Okay, so that's now good to go. We can hit OK on that. We'll hit OK again. Now it's going to ask to, uh, you know, it'll need to re restart itself to get everything refreshed and good to go. So we'll go ahead and do that. And just to be safe, I'll exit out of the client here and we can always get back into it. I'll give it a few minutes here. It's normally fairly, uh, fairly quick, so it should be good to go. Okay, so you've gone through three steps so far. You've got the shell database um, that you created as a profiler repository via the repository manager tool. You've hopefully got a happy CMC, not like myself, that's allowed you to register the profile repository in the CMC. Um, and the third step is you've now associated the profiler with the job server. You've restarted the job server. Now you should be good to go. Should, should be ready for action. So we'll go ahead and log in here. Okay. Now I have a lot of repositories here. Um, yeah, you know, this may mirror a dev system for you. Um, and basically you can associate a repository. Uh, I think it's globe. Basically, I think it's global per, per repository or local repository. Um, I can sh I'll show you where you do that all now anyway. So go ahead and log in to your repository. I'll have to hit a few. Um, okay. So you can see here that now it's asking for mine already. Um, Okay, so if you haven't set up your profile yet, or the profile server or profiling repository, what you'll notice is down here will be a red X. Okay, for me, this one's already associated because I'm reusing one that was set up before, but this is, will be a red X, okay? 
Now, how you associate it or how to actually try to work with the uh, with with the job server and the profiling server, you've got to come over to this to the tools section here. Use the tools tools drop down, and you'll see a profiler server login here. Okay, so basically you'll just select that. It'll pop up with another logon screen. You'll enter your credentials. It'll go find what's registered via the CMC. Hence why the second step is important. Um, and now it's going to ask you which one do you want to use to associate. And we'll use the one we set up, which is the DS profile and skill based for stats. We'll hit OK. Now, the reason I get asked for this, uh, this, this password uh, to have to enter my password every time is because I'm using SQL um, security. If you had Windows, this would just pass you through automatically. Okay, so when you go ahead and do that, your red X will go away and now you'll see the full icon will show up. And if you look down to the bottom left, you'll see that there's a profile server colon uh, DS profile underscore baseball stats administrator. So now you're set up ready to go. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. So now that it's uh, that the profile is active, uh, you can start to go ahead and submit profiling requests. Alrighty, so good way to do that is let me try and find uh, a set of data here. Um, let me take a look at this one real quick. Okay. How complicated is this one? All right, this one's pretty straightforward. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and run some profiling stats on this. Okay, so one thing you will also notice is that if you do not have the profile of ser or profiling server set up. You'll see that these two extra options here, when you right click on any sort of source or target, uh, it will be grayed out. Uh, so once you get the profiling server underway and set up in your client, um, you, 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 these will now become enabled. So just to understand a little bit about the difference between these two, um, the first one here, submit column profile request. This will basically get ask the profiling server to run a whole bunch of um, advanced statistics uh, over the structure of the uh, of the object, um, and basically, since it's you know, it's a simple table, it's just going to be columns. It'll just go for every field. It'll do a whole bunch of great statistics, and you'll see that done soon. The second one um, is an interesting one. It basically helps you to understand the relationship between two tables, um, whether one has more than another. Um, or whether there's no relationship at all. I tend not to use this one that much. I tend to find the, some, the column profiling um, does 99% of what I'm trying to get at um, with, uh, with the daily profiling uh, activity. Um, but you, know, you, you may find the relationship one handy. Um, so we'll try that one later, but let's, let's, go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and see the column profile in action. So once you figured out what target, or sorry, what object you're going, you, you want to profile, you'll go ahead and click that. It'll pop up with a task name. Uh, so you can rename this to be something yeah, more meaningful to you. If, if you want to keep a log, a consistent log that you're able to go back and double check. Um, but for me, generally what's picked here is good enough. Um, you know, we'll, we'll want to do all uh, for this table, we'll do everything and we'll make sure we have the detailed profiling selected. So once you've got that set up, you'll just go ahead and submit. The console will open. And you'll see that this switched over to done now. You can look at a log here. Um, whoops. Um, I think if actually this is that's interesting. Yeah, so I'll show you the logging aspect afterwards, but this will report if there was an issue, you will see the status switch to error. 
Um, hopefully you don't get that. And I don't know why you would get anything complicated like that, but um, generally if you're doing simple column profiles, you should be absolutely fine. So let's go on ahead and profile that table for us. So now we want to go and check the results. And the way you do that is back in the view data option. So if you go and click on that, you'll see, let me try and make this a bit bigger for everyone. Um, I'll just do it this way. Drag that down. Okay, so if you look in the view data um, function in data service, you see you've got a second tab here. And it's called the profile tab. If you go ahead and select that now, you've got a whole new perspective on this object. Um, and the great thing about the data services profiling, our uh, data services profile is this is interactive. Okay. So you'll see soon how powerful this can be. All right. So let's run through some of the statistics you've got here. You know, most of you should be pretty familiar with, uh, you know, uh, these data statistics. They're pretty common across most tools, you know, min, max, um, median, uh, you've got some string length. You know, these, these string length ones are always great because um, they help you with your data modeling, you know, so you don't, um, you know, if, if you know something like the fields, uh, you know, um, sex or if it's a person or what else have we got here? First name, you know, some of these aren't tend to, may not tend to grow. So, you know, you could probably whack an extra couple of digits on. So let's say make that 15 and you're good to go. So that's the, sort of like you, you're architecting the data, um, you know, to, to make not only is it good practice to have it designed in a way that you're saving space and, you know, you're, you're obviously not truncating any, any data. And if we move along, you can, the, the really, uh, the really cool ones here are distincts. Um, now this one's pretty cool because what it allows you to do is that if you've got a category um, type field, you know, obviously categories or, or, or any sort of contextual field, not so much name, um, you know, like a store code here might be important or, you know, like job type, job title, something like that. Um, they're important to understand because they tend to be the basis of what you're going to either filter or slice of dice by in your reporting. So it's important you get familiar with them to understand what you're dealing with, right? So this is when the interactive piece of the of the profiling tool comes into play. So if you watch what I do here, um, if we go ahead and stick on, uh, click on store code, it'll now pop up a little um, graphic on the side here that tells you even more details around, okay, well, these are the actual distinct values. How many records make up those? and the percentage of the total. So I, I've used this a million times um, over uh, some of the most recent work I've done um, and, and using data services in there. I can't tell you how, how, how useful this is when you're trying to do data profiling. And what's even cool about this is you can go down even further. So let's say you, you come across a piece of data. Um, now this one's a little bit uh, it's not quite as easy to, to use. Okay, so this is interesting. So we take that particular, um, uh, let's say we've got gender here. Um, you know, we want to profile gender and understand what sort of values are being used here. And, and, and then, you know, let's say that something unusual is here. Maybe I think unknown is probably used here because people probably don't um, opt into this. But this is a great way to understand what you need to deal with because most people who are probably designing uh, for this particular attribute might say, well, I only need to deal with male or female, but no, there's this other attribute here. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I want to know a little bit more about this. So what you can do is you can go ahead and click the four and it goes up and retrieves those distinct four rows. So now you can get a little, you're going to get a very uh, specific data set um, and a specific drill down on a set of data that you're a little bit unsure about, 
um, and now you can get the full the full picture of what's happening here. And a good thing, the great thing about this is that if you know how easy this is just to go, all right, well, you know what, I'm going to take a copy of this. You can do save as here. Um, I'll do CSV. I'll just whack that on a desktop. I'll just say um, data unknown. Oh, whoops. You can save that. And then what you can do is that if you've got a contact in the business, you want to say, hey, can you help me understand where these um, you know well, what these what this set of data is and help me how did this get here is this something we need to cater for okay and that makes your job hell of a lot easier than having you sit there and run um, bits and pieces of SQL or um, having to rely on that sort of manual process you know here it was just a it was three steps okay what's even cool is you can do this for doesn't look like we have nulls but let's take this uh, zero here so you can see this here personal number, um, which I'm going to make a dangerous assumption and say that might be, uh, okay, maybe that's some sort of idea or something. Anyway, let's say that this was something else, mobile phone maybe. Um, you go ahead and click that one and it shows it is a zero. You know, that may be, uh, if this is an important field and it's set to zero, or in some cases um, a null would have been better, right? If there's some nulls in there, you can click on the null um, and, and it will drill to that piece of data. And then again, you can go through the process of saving that aside, sending to the business contacts and saying, guys, can you help me understand this data, right? So this, this is a very powerful tool from that aspect. It can improve and speed up the data profiling and even the development aspect, because now you're becoming a master of this data. You're getting very, you're getting more familiar with it via this cool mechanism of, of drilling down. And that's pretty much it from the profiler perspective. Um, we can go ahead and what I will do is I'll go ahead and just try and run a um, a, uh, a column um, relationship uh, request or profile, and let's see. Hopefully, we might be uh, given. I don't have a lot of data to play with at the moment. I, I can still show you what this what this does. Um, let's, let's stick with the DS Warehouse um, data store here. Let me just go ahead and uh, actually, we'll do East off again. GDs. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that job code looks like it's uh, related to the employee table because I do remember seeing a, uh, a job code field there. So let's do this. All right, so we'll go ahead and we want to know. So the, the task here is we would like to understand the relationship between the employee table and the duties table. Okay, so you go ahead, right click again. Oh, whoops. Uh, you, you're, yeah, this one's always weird. Um, so when you hit this uh, when you hit the submit relationship profile request with, it's going to give you a little pointer object like that. Basically, you're just saying you, this is the other table you want to know the relationship to. Okay, so it brings up a little relationship table. You can uh, play with the relationships here, etc. Um, well, ours is pretty simple. We just want to know that, that you know what sort of you know what 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 is our population between these two tables. Again, it'll generate the task name for you. Uh, and I think the only difference here is it whacks this R in. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and submit that. Shouldn't take long. All right, it's already done, which is great. Okay. So now, since we started from the employee table, we'll have to go back and look at that one. And what you should see is you should see now where there was uh, the pro there was two tabs. There was, you know, there's the data tab profile. You now see a relationship tab. So if you go ahead and select that, you'll get the uh, the profiling of the of the relationship between the two. Now, unfortunately, um, 
that doesn't seem to have found a relationship, which could be because it's relying on an actual foreign key that doesn't exist. Um, but what would happen there is it would basically show you a relationship between the two. Um, again, and then you can drill into what records are matching what, et cetera. Um, again, I haven't found this to be too uh, useful in my travels, um, but you may find a, a need for it at some point. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have a relationship here to show you that. Let me look at the key. Oh, no, there's a, oh, that's a primary key. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it wants to play the game. Let's see if we can quickly whip this up. Um, foreign key. Now, I'm always better at writing the SQL than actually doing it through the objects. So anyway, it uh, looks like I don't. Let me just try one more, one more, um, one more. Oh, geez. So I think these are all, these we do. We just set these up for profile. You're not really playing with the, um, the relationship one. Might have something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to show that uh, show that with any meaningful data. So apologies for that. Um, but basically, again, it would just show you the relationship between the two and get, get just to help you get a better understanding of the uh, of the data points between those two tables. Alrighty. Um, so that's pretty much it from what I wanted to show today. Uh, again, you know, I hope you guys can see that uh, if you have data services, or maybe even if you don't, if you have a, if if you have just as a powerful data profiling tool, uh, how how important it can play, or how much of a role it can play in not only helping your understanding as a developer, or just as 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 a report writer, or getting to know more about your business uh, and your business systems. Um, it can also help improve and, and, and even expedite the development process if you're using a data profiling tool um, yourself. If you didn't take anything away from the demonstration, I hope you take away just the emphasis on, um, you know, having data profiling as a part of your practice, as a part of your methodology for going about uh, your day-to-day your -day business or enhancements or projects. Um, I would strongly urge you to make that a part of your repertoire for sure. And that's pretty much it from me, Brianna. I don't know if anybody has any questions or wants to see anything a bit more in detail. I'd be happy to show anything more well, with the remaining time. Yeah, Taylor, uh, Taylor the, um, it was interesting the polls at the beginning showed that nobody was really doing um, data profiling with the data services data profiler. A few people were doing it with other tools. Um, that, you know, I can see how an ETL developer would want to, you know, look at their data because it would help them to understand what kind of, you know, quali data quality cleansing routines, transformations they would need to create in order to clean up the data. But it does go back to the point of whose responsibility is the data, and that's the business. And so, you know, this is a tool really, don't you think, that could be effectively used by the, the business analyst, um, the person in the business to figure out what they've actually got in their data and uh, based on that to make recommendations as to what they want, um, you know, the ETL developers to do with it. Yeah, no, I would 100% agree, Paul. Um, obviously, the uh, if they don't have anything more robust that's more business-esque, which I think is what Information Steward um, is really in that market. But of course, Information Steward, as we all know, is a bit of a hefty license. Um, that this this could be a great alternative. Um, I don't think, you know, and not only 
I don't think a BA would even want to touch any of your mappings or anything like that, but they could definitely use the profiling aspect and be taught how to do that. Um, and I think it would enhance their job a lot. Yes, I agree. Well, you just brought up a very interesting point there, that information steward, as you quite rightly point out, is a uh, an additional license. It's, a, um, it's quite expensive. Um, and yet here you have um, a fairly effective data profiler built into uh, data services itself. Yes. Right? Exactly. Yeah. What just like what I mentioned at the start, it, it's free. Um, I, I don't know of any license um, limitations. Like even if you have an edge version of data services or the full blown enterprise version, it, it still comes free as a part of it. It's built in there. All right. Well, any other questions or comments, uh, feel free to enter them into the questions panel and I'll be happy to address them to Tyler. Also, we're, we're going to launch a survey after this webinar. I know data services is a, a rare topic on our CPO series, but we would love to hear from you and, and specifically what interests you in data services. Um, obviously, for, for those who attended who are maybe curious about using it in the future, we would love to hear those, uh, those interests and specifically what about data services you're looking to learn more about. But at this time, I'd like to thank you very much, Tyler, for, for this session. It will be recorded. Oh, did another question? Yeah, there's another question here, Tyler, is that obviously you're identifying, you know, data anomalies with the data profile. As you identify those anomalies, is there any automation available in data services to turn those into transforms? I mean, is there a time-saving way to do that, or do you, do you just have Wow, that's that's a great question. <laughs> wow, how cool would that be? Um, unfortunately, no, I, I don't know of a way to, um, you know, wouldn't that be cool if you could right click on it and then hit, hey, make this a validation rule. Um, you can't, well, you can't do the automation part. You do have the transformation um, you know, the validation rule transformation uh, as part of it, as you can add it to your mappings. Um, and basically what they do is they allow you to uh, set up rules based on incoming data. And then if they pass these set of rules, you can divert them to a table where you want good data to live, um, a table where you want the bad data to live, and then you've uh, an actual, um, it, there's a separate table that tells you why it failed. Now, while you would have to set that up in the ETL, that would you could use something like a business objects report with InfoBurst or InfoBurst directly uh, to then broadcast that um, data to, to the data custodians to say, hey, you need to clean something up here. So while the automation there isn't to build the mapping or, or have it done automatically for you, there are, the pieces are there, you just have to put it together. Got it. Thanks, good. Great, and uh, to answer the question that did come in, this session will be recorded and shared within the next uh, 24 hours, so please feel free to socialize it uh, with others in your organization, and we hope uh, you found it helpful. And once again, I just wanted to highlight at our events.infosol.com uh, website, you can see all of the upcoming free educational business objects user groups. Hopefully they're coming to your area. And if you're interested, we do ask that you register ahead for a proper headcount. And if you're unable to attend, feel free to share this website with others as we'd love for you to join us. Thank you again, Tyler, for a great session. Thank all of you for, thank you all for attending. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks time at our next Let's Speak video. This concludes the webinar for today.